Okay, so the first thing that we need to do, and uh, for some of you I've done this for you, is to fold your paper in hot dog style, open it up, fold it again, this is hamburger style, and then these folds are going to provide our guidelines, okay? And then you can, and again, some of you already have this done for you, you can center up a circle so that the center is right in the middle of your template and trace around it, okay? I'm not going to switch off and start using um, a, uh, a permanent marker. Okay, so this is what you should have already. And I suggest that you draw it in pencil and then go over it with um, uh, the, the Sharpie. Believe me, I did a lot of erasing uh, when I was doing this. Okay, so this is a mandala, and we're, as I mentioned before, we're learning about radial design. And so that every fourth, coming out from the center, every fourth of our, of our design is the same, okay? So one, two, three, four, we have four of the same design. They're all just coming out from the center point. So I think they look pretty cool. And this is an example of radial design. Or excuse me, symmetry. Okay, so we can, you can make this as um, detailed as you want or as simple as you want. Um, I'm going to use our first circle as definition of a space and I'm going to make a center circle and then I'm going to center up another circle you may use a template if you want if you have like a, a paint bottle or let's see I've got I've also got little yogurt cups, whatever is the right size. Um, one of these larger paint bottles might work for you. And then I'm going to draw lines. You do not need to make the same design as I do along those folds. And then I'm going to have it come out from the center it's like we are creating a pie. Okay. And then I'm going to use this fold again as the center of a triangle. And then guess what? I'm going to use this fold as the center of the triangle. This is the... Um, do you remember the kaleidoscopes, the where you could turn them and they would move and you look through it and they move into different shapes and colors? That is an example. Those designs you were seeing, that's an example of radial symmetry. Okay, so this matches this, this matches this. Okay, so I'm going to do one more thing inside the circle, and that's to put the same size of partial circles. In between our triangles. Okay, so now we're going to start working on the outside of the circle and I'm going to introduce some straight lines that kind of hug the larger circle. Then 
They don't have to be perfectly straight. You can use a ruler if you want, but don't need to be. So I box that in. And then I'm going to use a bottle or something as a template and do four circles kind of straddling these guidelines. our guideline slicing right through the center and then we'll do another one here and then we'll do the fourth one here so again, these are all positioned at the same place. They're the same size. So we're following our guidelines of radial symmetry. Then what I'm going to do is put a dot right in the middle of each of our circles. And then I'm going to do kind of like a flower petal straddling that line do the same thing down here You're probably getting into the rhythm of this now you do it once and then you do it three more times Now we're going to do from this, and again, you don't have to do this, but I'm just explaining what, what I did. I decided to use this point and this point to stop and start a partial circle. I'm going to turn and do the same thing. Keep turning. And again, you can see that I can turn it any way, and it looks the same. So then I'm going to do a diagonal line out from the corner of my square. Get 
Okay, so I'm going to kind of follow this. And if you want to draw with your pencil, just extend that line out. Okay, you can erase it later. And I'm going to do another kind of triangle effect. Again, you can extend that line out for as a guide. And then just have it hug like an ice cream cone. Just have it hug the circular shape. give a little different look. I'm going to do some round, rounded curved lines on these. Again, I'm just showing you different techniques that you can use while you're designing yours. circle one. Okay, so you can pause the tape and um, I say tape because I'm old. You understand that I just am used to thinking about videotapes instead of vi digital videos. So I am dating myself, I guess, by calling it a tape, but you can pause the video and take your time with tracing your pencil lines with your Sharpie and then going back with your eraser and cleaning up those pencil lines so you're not seeing them. All right. So, when we come back together, you should have that kind of design. Now, if you want, you can go, you can keep growing it out. I just kind of like the looks of, of that mandala and, um, and just thought I would stop. Sometimes the best thing that an artist can, can know or intuit is when to stop on a piece. All right, so our next step will then be applying color. Now we're ready to put color on. So we're going to use uh, Chalk Pax Pastels, uh, but, and we've done projects with those before, but we're gonna do something a little different uh, this time. We're going to, uh, you, you can either take a, a paintbrush and put some water right on the paper like that and what you'll see is that it really brings a lot of dark dark color to it or you can actually dip it in to the water itself directly and then color with it okay um, I think I'm going to go with the brush technique
And what's fun about this is that it does give it an, an interesting color. You can spread it around a little bit. Not as much as if it was dry. But you get that intense of intensity of color that you don't get with a dry chalk pastel. Whoops. That's okay, we'll just go over it. So we want these to be nice and colorful. You can use whatever colors you want. I'm going to make this red. You can leave some white spaces if you'd like. Just make sure that you don't get your hand in it because it will smudge it. Now you can blend over this with another color if you'd like. section. You don't have to use a tremendous amount of water, just just a little. to another section.
Occasionally you will want to wash your hands because they'll get pretty, pretty crummy with all this, as you can see. Okay, I'm going to turn this off and go wash my hands a little bit. Okay, so I have the middle section done, and I'm going to show you just what this can look like. I'm not going to um, uh, finish up the whole thing because hopefully you're doing your own thing and having a good time, and I don't want to sway what you're doing. Uh, but uh, I'm just going to work out here. And I'm going to get a light green. And if you want to, you can go back over with your brush and smooth it out like that. That's another technique that you can you can use if that's easier for you. So it kind of becomes like watercolor. Okay. There we go. put a little bit of water. I'll show you more how to do that technique. So you don't have to necessarily cover it all up. I think you can take a damp, not real drippy, mm -hmm. and you can use it like watercolor. Like that. Now, I'm not going to show you how I'm doing all of these, but each one of these should look like this. Remember, we're going for the radial symmetry, so each part should be colored the same. Make sure that you clean out your brush if you're using the brush to move your chalk pastels around. Make sure that you clean out your brush before you switch to a different color. spaces here so I think I'm going to go over that
Okay, now after this dries, you can go back and uh, go over your black lines a little bit. And then if you want to, um, you can put a matte fixative on it to make sure that it doesn't smudge off. This technique will not smudge off as much as straight uh, dry chalk pastels, but it still might a little bit. I'm going back over some of these areas. Try to soften out some of that white. I guess that's what I like about the the paintbrush technique is that you can anyway so again each one of these should be um, colored the same way so that they're mirror images of each other uh, so I hope you enjoyed learning a new way to use uh, chalk pastels and if you want to do the background if you've got some background showing uh, you can you can do that. You can use regular uh, watercolors, uh, whatever you would like. You can use dry uh, chalk pastels uh, to give it a little different effect. But um, just have fun with it and make it your own. Thank you.